Hello students, let us have a look at our seventh chapter that is wave optics. After studying this chapter, you will be able to explain the Huygens experiment and interference, discuss the Young's experiment, understand the Young's double slit experiment, explain the single slit diffraction. We will first try to understand what is wave optics. Light emitting objects like the sun or electric bulb are known as sources of light. But what exactly is the thing that is emitted? How do you see it? Is it a particle like the atoms or is it a wave like ripples on the surface of the pond? Light is both a wave and a particle and it depends on the situation on how it behaves. We have evidence that light is a wave because it refracts like a wave, it diffracts like a wave, it can interfere with itself like a wave. Also, like a wave, it can detect Doppler's effect and Young's double slit experiment. On the other hand, there is particle evidence. Evidence that light also behaves like a particle. Black body radiation. Crompton effect. Photoelectric effect. Let us get back to the question, what is light? You see, light sometimes behaves as a particle and at other times it behaves as a wave. Huygens principle and experiment. In 1678, Dutch physicist Christian Huygens believed that light was made up of waves vibrating up and down perpendicular to the direction of the light waves and therefore formulated a way of visualizing wave propagation. This became known as Huygens principle. Huygens considered light to be a wave. He envisioned a wave crest advancing by imagining each point along the wave crest to be source point for small circular expanding wavelets which expand with the speed of the wave. Now notice that one line can be drawn as a tangent to all these circles. The surface tangent to these wavelets determines the contour of the advancing wave. Huygens said that the tangent line represents the new wave front. Thus, every point on a wave front is a source of secondary wavelets. Interference In this video, you will be able to see constructive and destructive interference. Notice at the bottom of the screen two waves, Y1 and Y2. Each of these waves has the same amplitude. Now the picture above shows us what the two waves look like when they are added together. Let us see what happens when we change the relationship between these waves. If I move the waves so that they are in phase, the amplitude of the resultant wave increases. The amplitude is very large. Now if I move the waves so that they are out of phase, you can see that the resultant of the waves starts to change. They start to get smaller and smaller. Eventually, when they are exactly out of phase with one another, the resultant wave is zero. So when these waves are out of phase, we get a resultant of destructive interference. And if we move it back up, then they are in phase. The resultant is we get constructive interference and we get the maximum amplitude. Particle, wave and quanta. We first need to see how particles or little balls of matter act. If we randomly shoot marble at the screen, you see a pattern at the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now if we add a second slit, we expect to see a second band duplicated. Now let us look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the lines the marble make. Now when we add a second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, 
there is nothing. So when we throw matter through two slits, we get this two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Now let us go quantum. An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter. Let us fire a stream through a single slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. Now if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get the marble two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, but we get pattern like waves. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It does not make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought maybe those balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So now they decided to shoot electrons one at a time. There is no way that they could interfere with each other. But after some time, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. Young's experiment. The wave theory of light came to prominence with Thomas Young's experiment performed in 1801. Imagine looking down at the surface of a pond and say you drop a rock in the pond. You know that waves spread out in circular pattern. You have something tapping constantly at the surface of the pond. So you get this constant series of waves spreading out from one point. Now say you drop another rock in the pond. You have another set of waves emanating from this point. Well, when the waves from one cross the waves from the other, they add up at that point to make a larger wave. So this point right here is what we call constructive interference. One wave adding up with another to make a larger wave. And you could say the peak or crest of one wave coinciding with the trough of another wave at a point right there. When the crest of one crosses the trough of another, they would cancel each other out. That is what we call destructive interference. You see, the interference pattern form right in here that is characteristic of wave. Wave from one source interfering with the wave from another source. You get a pattern like this. Young's double slit experiment. Thomas Young first demonstrated interference from light waves with a double slit. A schematic diagram for this experiment is as shown. Light is made to pass through a single slit SO. The waves emerging from this slit is made to pass through S1 and S2. Each of the slit acts as a source for circular expanding waves. The points of intersection of two crests, one from each slit, are points of constructive interference. The point of intersection of a crest from one slit and a trough from the other slit is a point of destructive interference. Therefore. The interference pattern called fringes consisting of alternating light and dark bars will be seen on the screen. A bright fringe appears if the light emerging from S1 and S2 interfere constructively and a dark fringe appears if the light from the two slits combine destructively at any location on the screen. If d sine lambda is equal to n lambda then the two waves are in phase and constructively interfere, so the most light hits the screen at these points. These points are called the maxima of the pattern. On the other hand, if d sine theta is equal to n plus 1 by 2 lambda, where n is an integer, then the two waves are half a wavelength out of phase and will destructively interfere. In other words, the two waves cancel each other out so no light hits the screen at P. These points are called the minima of the pattern. The double slit experiment proves that light has wave properties because it relies on the principle of constructive interference and destructive interference which are unique to waves. Diffraction 
Diffraction is the bending of light around corners. Say here is the ground and say here is an object, maybe at the edge of a table or something and light is shining. We will think it as a wave coming in instead of a beam. Think of these as waves in the ocean, but these are light waves. Well, the light is blocked, so you end up with some light landing up down here and over this region you get a shadow. But the light is not completely blocked. It bends around the corners. What we have here is a little over the top, does not really bend that much. At least you cannot see so much with your eyes, but it does bend around corners. That is called diffraction. You know that waves do that because sound waves do that all the time. If you are in a room in your house, say you are standing right here and say your mother is standing right there. When you talk, sound waves come out. They can go right through the room, they can bend. You can hear even if you do not see each other. But light waves do not bend nearly as much. How much they bend depends on the wavelength and frequency. But they do bend around corners. One thing you can notice is that as a result of diffraction, shadows do not have well-defined edges all the time. The edge of the shadow will be little fuzzy as some of the light is bending as it goes around the edge. The point to drive home is that diffraction is something that waves do. Particles do not do this. If you are shooting bullets in this direction, a bullet would either miss and land there or hit and stop. But it would not go and bend around like this. Particles do not do this, only waves do. So the point here is that light is shown to do things which only waves do. Single slit diffraction. The single slit diffraction setup is the same as with the double slit experiment only with just one slit. Actually, there are a lot of different paths that light can take to P from any point in the slit. So the diffraction pattern is caused by the superposition of an infinite number of waves. However, paths coming from the two edges of the slit, since they are the farthest apart, have the biggest difference in phase. We get situations of constructive interference where we get bright areas on the screen and we get destructive interference where we get dark areas. This time, we define D as the width of the slit and theta as the angle between the middle of the slit and a point P. Single slit diffraction is nowhere near as noticeable as double slit interference. The maximum at n is equal to 0 is very bright but all of the other maxima are barely noticeable. Polarization of light Because light is a transverse wave, it can vibrate in a variety of directions compared to its direction of motion. Unpolarized light In unpolarized light, the fluctuations in the electric field occur in all directions. It is random. As you can see here, the light beam goes in one way but those electric field fluctuations occur in many directions. Most of the light we see is unpolarized. Polarized light Because light is a transverse wave, it can be polarized. Longitudinal waves cannot be polarized. In polarized light, the electric field oscillates in only one direction. As you can see here, compared to the direction of wave motion, the light is vibrating in one particular direction. Polarizers Unpolarized random light can be made to be polarized with the aid of a type of filter. Take an unpolarized random light here, pass it through a polarizing filter and the result at the other side is polarized light. The polarizing filter acts like a grate or strain that allows only one direction of motion. Pairs of polarizers A pair of polarizers can be used to precisely adjust the intensity of light source. With these two pairs of filters, we can arrive at just the amount of light that we would like. The end result is 
polarized light of a particular reduced intensity. Intensity reduced polarizers with the pair of polarizing filters at a zero degree angle with each other a maximum amount of light emerges with the pair of polarizing filters at a 90 degree angle with each other a minimum amount of light emerges virtually none so by adjusting the angle between the direction of the two filters between 0 and 90 degrees the intensity of the light can be controlled now look at these two pictures can you spot any difference between them no right this is because the human eye cannot tell the difference between a polarized beam of light and one that has not been polarized. Let us find out more about polarization of light. Take a polaroid disc in front of a source of light. Rotate the disc. Do you see any change? Now take another polaroid disc. Overlap them. You can see the light through them. Now what will happen if I rotate one of the discs? You see that at one point light passes, at one point light becomes faint and wow at another point no light passes. What is happening is when both the discs are aligned vertically all the light will pass through. But when the first disc is aligned vertically and the second disc is aligned horizontally no light will pass through. Brewster law when unpolarized beam of light is incident at the polarizing angle I on an interface separating a rarer medium from a denser medium of refractive index mu such that mu is equal to tan I then light reflected in the rarer medium is completely polarized this is known as Brewster law over here the reflected and refractive rays are perpendicular to each other. Summary Newton had said that light is a particle and Thomas Young came along and said that light was a wave. Young produced experiments showing that light was a wave. In the 1800s, experiments after experiments done showed that light was a wave. Gradually, people began to disbelieve Isaac Newton's particle theory. In the year 1905, another physicist came along and did an experiment that clearly demonstrated that light is a particle. The experiment was known as the photoelectric effect. In the year 1905, another physicist came along and did an experiment that clearly demonstrated that light is a particle. The experiment was known as the photoelectric effect. The physicist who did this received the Nobel Prize for the work. The physicist who did this was Albert Einstein. He called a light particle as photon. So instead of copper skills, we have a new name, a photon. Now we have the entire scientific community firmly convinced of one idea that light is a wave and there is basically only two people saying that light is a particle. So what do we make of this? Is light a particle or a wave? Well, today scientists recognize that light simultaneously has two different natures. It behaves as a particle and it behaves as a wave. The experiment that Thomas Young did demonstrated the wave nature of light and the experiment that Einstein did demonstrated the particle nature of light. We accept the fact that light behaves as a particle and behaves as a wave. You hear the phrase wave-particle duality. Another term you hear is the dual nature of light. It behaves as both a particle and a wave.